Hi everyone, welcome. I'm just getting my laptop set up. I apologize. I know this takes a few minutes every time and it's just because it takes a minute for Facebook to catch up. But uh, it was actually pretty quick today. Okay, so welcome. Um, today I have been featuring on my blog this week the Dino Days Bundle and it includes this amazingly cute stamp set with the pterodactyl, a uh, bronchiosaurus, a t-rex, and I cannot remember the name for the life of me at the moment, so um, regardless. Hi Amanda, welcome! So anyhow, very cute set. Thanks for being a friend of Soros. I love you this much. It looks, it's more than it looks and looks who's hatched and you're raw, rawsome. Sorry, rawsome. So um, great bundle. Uh, hi Celia, welcome. And I love using it. And last year for Bentley's birthday adventure, which he tells me he needs a birthday party this year. So I'm a little disappointed, but anyhow, I shouldn't be, I know, but we go on birthday adventures around here, not birthday parties. <laughs> it's easier on me. But uh, we went to the dinosaur park in Morrisburg, and they, you walk along a huge path, and you see all these huge statues of dinosaurs. It's a really cute little adventure. So we did that on top of Little Ray's last August. I will admit, it was a hot day. But this stamp set is perfect for um, dino days. So... I could only find the three photos. I'm not sure what happened to my, the rest of my photos, but that's okay. For once, I am actually in a photo because that does not happen on purpose. I don't like getting my photo taken. And I know that these are not, unfortunately, a video of a photo does not turn out very well, but it is what it is. So um, I'm going to use this set to create a layout. I did, hi Valerie, welcome. I did want to get a layout done. Um, I, I only did one layout featuring this bundle so I thought oh you know what it's a good time to do a second one so I'm going to start with whisper white 12 by 12 cardstock and I actually downloaded um a sketch from scrapbook and cards today hi Linda welcome and this is actually for some um if you were going to submit to the magazine this month and I may do that if I remember because I have a tendency to forget but uh, I thought it would be a good starting point. Um, and it's also a good way to show you that you can use a sketch that seems completely unrelated and make it still work. So we're going to start with that. So we have 12 by 12 white paper. And before I forget, today is the very last day of bonus days. So if you have not taken advantage yet, you can go to my online store at www.lisahenderson.stampinup.net. And for every $60 you spend, you get a $6 coupon to spend in August. And it's a great deal. It's a great way to stock up on supplies in particular. So this is the Dino Roar paper. I have two packs in here, so I have lots. But my original thought today was to try and make use of the blues, because I have not done that surprisingly enough bad boy mama on me um but let's see what we can come up with i've been really loving this pink um this one and the dark pink which i might not have any left of oh this stuff here i love this pattern and i've been trying to use it up so unfortunately the rest has fallen to the wayside but i'm just going to check to see if there's anything else that might work well for today really quickly because I do love the blues going on up here and so for those of you joining us for the first time I am not good at preparing ahead for our Facebook lives I simply to be honest don't have time which means my Facebook lives do take a little bit longer to do but um, you get a surprise every time literally me too Never know how it's going to turn out, but I do love doing them, so I keep going. So I think we're going to use, I needed about a six inch piece, which I think this is only going to be about a five, five and a quarter, but I can split it into two, so it might work out anyhow. So I am going to cut this paper. 
Now this paper, most designer series paper or pattern paper, doesn't matter what direction you cut it in, but some do, and this particular one does. So you wanna make sure that the dinosaurs are gonna be at the top of your page. So I'm gonna cut about, I'm gonna say about a three inch strip. There we go. And I think I'm gonna do about a seven, which working backwards, that means you want to do eliminate five. Thank goodness I can do that math in my head some days. And I am going to, I think, use the smaller stuff. So this should be 12 as well. And we will cut it down to five. And that's just my dog upstairs. I don't know what it is lately, but every time he seems to jump for some reason. So he sounds really loud and he's usually pretty quiet. So, that's going to be the base, if I can get those to line up once I adhere them. And then I decided I wanted to do, um, I'm going to try and use two of these three photos, I think. I think we're definitely going to use this one because look at the yellows. And I think this one too, actually, because again, the yellow is in there. So hopefully I'm on screen. I apologize. Some of them... For some reason, my uh, phone seems to be lower this month or this week than normal. But so they're going to go here and I might actually end up cutting this one down. I'm going to do that right now. I think it'll be a three by five. I might do both of them as three inch wide. So three inch. Yep. Yeah. The important part is to make sure you don't cut the kid out, apparently. Um, not that he doesn't have lots of photos, he does, trust me. But for my scrapbook, I love to have him in there. Um, I'm gonna actually leave this one longer at six, the full six inch, just because the dinosaur is that much longer. But I think they'll be okay once we stack them a little bit. So we have those done. We'll get rid of my scraps because otherwise they will be everywhere by the time I'm done. And I think I'm going to actually do some photo mats. So I have some Whisper White here that I'm going to cut down. And so because I cut those to three inch, I'm going to cut this to three and a quarter. I like my photo mats about a quarter of an inch bigger. And I'm going to cut the six and a quarter first. And then I'm gonna cut a three and a quarter by five and a quarter. So I should be able to go this side. Three and a quarter. By five and a quarter. So I can get rid of my little quarter inch strip. So I'm gonna put those on, but I find photo mounts really help to distinguish, especially when they're busier photos. So somewhere around here, there we go. I have some tear tape. So for those of you that are scrapbookers, I highly recommend tear tape versus our snail. Snail's a great adhesive, especially when you're new, but I have found in the past with our humidity here in Ontario that my scrapbooks have fallen apart um, after some time and it, is totally 100% humidity, but it is an easy um, adhesive to use. I got rid of it for a long time and I've actually started to bring it back as I've been teaching some beginner classes lately because I do find um, it's so much easier for people to use, but you do have to just know that it's um, not really meant for scrapbooking if you live in Ontario where our humidity levels are a little higher. Um, I learned that one the hard way. Maybe I don't put enough on with it, but I find two strips, top and bottom, are good enough with the tear tape and it lasts forever. Or it seems to. I haven't had any problems since I switched. So there's those. I'm going to go ahead and tape these down as well. I love this pattern too, but I haven't used it yet. I know that's shocking. Oh. 
I left the baby gate open because Magnus might be coming down to join us. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to leave it a couple inches down from the top. The other benefit is if you only put a little bit top and bottom is if you make a mistake, you can bring it back up easier. I have, find a lot of people want to put adhesive everywhere. Oh, actually, that might be really cute. There. You know what? I'm going to switch to the yellow side. That's why I haven't used it, because I used this paper in a class, so there was a lot of it uh, missing. There. And there. Okay, so we're going to tape those down. You can tell I got it off just a touch. I find you can usually pressure fit it a little bit and move it over. There we go. Okay, so, and I really love these two with the paper. See how much better that is with the yellow? So I'm gonna glue these down. Thank you, Valerie, I'm glad you agree. <laughs> I think though with my photos is the biggest thing is that those, they're so much better with the photos. that there we're going to cover up a good chunk of it and I'm going to use dimensionals for this one sorry some paper pumpkin dimensionals there um, but I find dimensionals when you're stacking photos really help then one normally you guys that have been watching me for a while know I tend to scrapbook with no photos Today you're getting the benefit of photos. Um, I am horrible for that, I do admit. But uh, I find I have thousands of photos. I can match a photo to just about anything, so I don't worry too much about it. Um, for instance, I've been using the pink dinosaur paper and I have a little boy. One, so what? I'd put him photo of him on it anyways he'd probably think it was cool but a little girl at his daycare if I ever took a photo of her she wears the little dinosaur dress all the time it's her favorite dress she's so cute so um I wouldn't be worried about not being ever able to find a photo so we got photos down we got some pattern paper down I'm gonna add some dinosaurs next so I'm gonna set this aside I want, if you're looking at the original sketch, there's some groupings of leaves on the original sketch. So I'm going to make sure that I have groupings in three spots. Um, when we're designing scrapbook layouts, they always say that one rule of threes or odd numbers is always best. It's more visually pleasing. And then there's the triangular rule. And the idea of the triangle is that it kind of focuses your eye into that center, which is where your photos are. So... Let's it's pretty sticky here today. Okay, definitely need the T-Rex. Let's face it, I'm gonna do one of all of them. There. Some will be grouped, some won't be, and we'll get some spikes going in there too in a minute. I got some extra paper here. I'm also going to grab, I had pulled out Granny Apple Green, Pretty Peacock, and Pool Party, but I'm actually gonna grab Mango Melody as well. There we go. And you can see, technically this color of green is Old Olive, but I've been using the Granny Apple Green with it because I really like it. Um, it just seems to pop a little bit more and it's a little more kid-ish. But I do like both, so we're gonna use Granny Apple Green, and I find it still matches. So first things up, I am going to do the T-Rex in Mango Melody. So if you are new to stamping, the one thing you want to do is one, especially with photopolymer stamps, place them face down, then pick them up. Secondly, ideally, 
I would have put something underneath my paper to begin with and I didn't do that. So we will do it this way. You just wanna have a little bit of gift, gift, give with photopolymer paper. So I'm okay using this paper pack just because the wrapper's already on it. So it's not like it's gonna affect anything. So just tap, tap, tap with your ink pad. I'm gonna put them right into the corner a little bit with a little bit of a white edge. But hopefully that'll give me some space to put the spikes on the same piece of paper. So there is my T-Rex. I'm gonna close that up. We're gonna do one on each color and then we'll go back and do spikes and bellies and stuff in different colors. So I'm gonna use my Stampin' Chamois to clean him. The nice thing about the Stampin' Chamois is if you have concerns about chemicals or anything, the Stampin' Chamois, you just rinse under the sink with water and it takes the ink right off quite nicely. So I didn't pick a big enough block, but we'll just turn it sideways and it will be fine. I'm gonna set that aside there. I think this guy is gonna be a little bit calmer and we'll do him in pool party. I actually have this piece, let's use it up. I find these are the pieces that are harder to use up down the road when they're long and skinny. There, so we have a pool party guy. Then, give him a quick little squish. And put him back. I am always very careful to put them all back because I am notorious for losing pieces. I don't know if anybody else is like that. I'm gonna do the other one first because I'm gonna to have to switch blocks. Okay, the pterodactyl I have found looks amazing in Granny Apple Green. So, I don't know why, it just does. But he just seems to kind of look the way he's supposed to. Or the way, I guess, science thinks it's supposed to. We don't really know, right? Um, there. And the one thing I really like about the little pterodactyl is I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but there's actually lines coming down to his little scalloped wings. He might be my favorite as far as detail goes. Or she, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> so something I'm noticing as I'm using these is that my stamps are actually not as sticky as they should be when they stick to the block. And that's because we've been handling them a lot. I've made, I think, 12-ish projects or eight projects, something like that, um, with them. Plus we had a class with them and everything else. So if you ever find that they're not sticking to the block at all, one of the easiest ways to fix them is to actually give them a little gentle bath in some mild dish soap. You don't want anything that's, um, sorry, I should have followed my own advice. Um, you don't want anything that's harsh, just mild dish soap. Really, all it is that makes them not sticky is the oil on your hands. So we need to get that oil off. So dish soap works best for that because it does, it's meant to repel oil on your uh, dishes. Sorry, when I picked it up, I could see some blank spots. So I, that's why I put it back down. Okay, there we go, perfect. And I find with this photopolymer set, because it's meant to show brush strokes and things like the little angles on his wings and such, um, you just need to give it a minute when it's when you're putting it down on the paper for the ink to fill in. Sometimes you still end up with a blank spot if you don't put something underneath it, but for the most part, I find it's actually just us being impatient that seems to be the bigger issue. So next I'm gonna do the accents. I'm gonna put this big block back because we definitely don't need it. 
So one of the things I really like is that we can do spikes and such. But what I've discovered, I'll show you here, is that although we can come in and stamp right on here, if you're going to die cut them, you've got to die cut them separately. So as two separate pieces. So instead of actually attaching this as I stamp it, I'm going to actually stamp it up above and we'll run it through the big, well, the big shot or a die cutting machine at the same time. So I think I really like Mango Melody mixed with Pretty Peacock. So I'm going to do that one for my T-Rex. Now, I won't be able to run them through at the same time because they'll overlap, but that's okay. I think we're probably looking at a couple passes here anyhow. So I'm going to put that back. So, and next we can, for this guy here, he can also have spikes. And I think I might do him and Granny. Actually, we might do him and Mango Melody. We've got to get more of that yellow in there. So, okay, I'll pick that up really quick. So there should, yeah, there's lots of space to do it right above him. Again, I'll have to run it through the big shot or die cutting machine a second time, but I'm okay with that. So there's that. Then next, if you're worried that the other two might be a little boring, <laughs> um, no, you can have lots of fun with this. I think actually I'm only going to stamp some on here, put that down, is there's actually some tummy dots or back dots, depending on how you want to look at it, that we have that we can stamp. This block is probably a little too large for it, but that's okay. And the only thing that's really going to show up is Pretty Peacock. Yes, it'll be tone on tone, but I think it'll still be a good tone on tone. So, actually, we'll go with the hump. There, and now he has some polka dots on him. I think I'm gonna leave my pterodactyl alone because they're both a little bit too large for that. Give that a quick rinse off, peel it up, and we'll put that down. So next up is die cutting. I'm going to put these away. I'm going to slide this paper out of the way. And I'm going to grab the big shot. It'll take a minute for the uh, camera to catch up with me or Facebook to catch up with me. So I can't tell yet what you guys can and can't see. I apologize. Okay, there we go. So I can put him down at the same time. I'm going to probably have to adjust. There we go. And I can put some of these down. Actually, if I take this and I rotate it to the side, well, I have to fix this guy yet again. Um, actually, I'm going to leave him off. I'm going to cut this one. And this one. And then I can do the other ones in a second pass. There we go. But I do find it a lot easier to do multiples at once. People ask how I get things done. This is one of the ways. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Amanda. It's where my camera's sitting, I think. We'll, uh, I'll be done with the big shot in two seconds here. I have a T-Rex. I have, oops, 
a bronchiosaurus, I believe. This guy's all cut out. Next, I'm going to do the spikes and the pterodactyl. So, hopefully, I think we're a little closer. There we go. So, where are my spikes? There's one, and there's the other. So, there's this one. So the thing I have discovered with the spikes is that you can actually get them pretty close on the top and there's going to be a glue edge along the bottom for you to put your adhesive on. And we'll get the pterodactyl. And let me, I apologize this is going to look awful for a minute, but I'm going to try and push this up just a touch. No, my phone stand's not going to go up a touch I don't think. I apologize. I'll have to play with it again later. I was running late, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> I honestly didn't adjust the phone stand or my uh, video stand, but it probably fell when I moved it a little bit. It, but it is actually exactly where it is every week in theory. <laughs> okay, so there's my garbage pile, that scrap. We got a pterodactyl and we got some spikes. Okay, so I'll bring the layout back in at least so you can see it. Then I have these lovely guys to spread around. So first things first is, while I do find you can make it work with tear tape, um, sorry, I just realized you can't see my little guys. Glue dots are probably the best for the spikes, but if you are an avid tear tape user, you can do it as well. But glue dots are easier to manipulate. Because you can stretch them into a long line really quick and easy. Has anybody else played with this set yet? I find it really fun. It's so cute. So... There we go. One T-Rex with some cute little spikes. We'll attach them to this one next. Ah, my pterodactyl stuck. There we go. And you probably don't need a ton of glue dots. Glue dots are pretty strong. It's just that I want it to really stay at the angle that I place it at. And I, and the one thing I do find with terror to, er, oh my goodness, with glue dots is that you can manipulate things a little bit and turn them. So by putting four on instead of two on, you just, you're going to hold it in place that much better. So if I can pick it up. And the nice thing is when you place it down, you can do it so that there's no white edge between the dinosaur and his spikes. There. Hi, Linda, again. So we've got that started. Is So when I place objects around my page, one of the things I try to do is pay attention to the way that they're facing. So this guy facing this way would be more suited to this corner up here. This guy facing this way would be better suited here. And then this one, it doesn't really matter as much because he's kind of walking this way, but facing this way. I hope that makes sense. And the pterodactyl is facing that way, of course. But, you know, he could easily work up there at the top. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to put this guy down here, though. But then everybody's kind of facing towards the center of the photo. So when I talked about that triangle earlier, 
it kind of helps draw you back in because you automatically want to look where they're looking. But I think actually I'm going to switch this one and this one. I think that makes more sense. So we have those kind of in place. The other thing, if you look at the original sketch, one, we're going to put a title over here. That part I'm fine with. But down here they have a gathering of some objects. So I want to somehow land my dinosaur in that corner. So one of the tricks you can use is to just use some pattern paper again. So I had an off cut that I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. So I could use this or I could use this. I think I'm actually probably going to cut it in half and use both. Maybe not quite half, but... And the other thing I'm going to do is angle each end. Cut from the corner there. And I want to go slightly bigger. I don't know where my snips went, but they are much better suited to this than these. Should take a look. They're probably right here. No, they aren't. Oh, maybe. There we go. Because these will do a much better job on banners. So I'm going to take this and flip it over as if it was like a ribbon. So I find when you're cutting banners, if you cut a little slot in the center, it's easier to run. It just gives your eye a point to run the scissors to. And you're more likely to be centered. I mean, it will never be perfect when you're eyeballing it like this, but it's more apt to be. Okay, there, I'll use some tear tape on that. There, okay, and he's probably gonna be pop dotted up on top of them. That banner is a little thin, so a really easy, simple way is if it's a little thin, cut it in half, split the difference, and with him right there, nobody will know. It's perfect. <laughs> so if you ever find yourself in that situation, that's the easy fix. So I'm going to, um, I don't think you can kind of see me. There we go. I'm going to set this closer to the corner. There. And I don't want to be too far off. If you're unsure and you need a straight edge, you can always use a piece of paper too. But uh, I know it's scrap, so it's harder to see. A scrap of white on a white page. So it's really hard to see, but there he is. I was gonna say, I managed to lose my dinosaur. But we'll put, uh, some dimensionals on them, give them a bit of a lift, and maybe one more. I like my scrapbooks because I tend to overstuff my actual albums, so I like to put lots of dimensionals and stuff on my scrapbooks so that they don't get bent and indented. There might also be a small problem where I sit with a six inch stack of layouts and then in the winter time, usually around Christmas, I go through and I put throw them all in albums. So there he is there. So see, nobody knows the difference that that piece of paper is split back there. So over here, um, again, cute kid. He's mine, so I'm allowed to say that. I 
think he's actually, this little guy up here is going to sit up here. I'll put him on some dimensionals so he sticks out a little bit. There. Get the backing off those. There. Actually, you know what? We'll kind of frame Bentley in there. There we go. He's cut off anyhow, so it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see much of him. And then up here, I'm going to put this guy in the background and the pterodactyl in the foreground, meaning that I'm going to put the pterodactyl on dimensionals. But one should go up, one should go down is generally kind of my rule of thumb. I do love to use dimensionals on my layouts. The shadowing causes a greater effect than you might realize until you actually do it. The flatter your layout, the less it looks um, the less it looks all done up. I'm just gonna I think I'm actually gonna overlap him on the photo a little bit. We'll get the pterodactyl up there. that one backing that doesn't want to give up okay and I think he can kind of go up there so again if we're talking the visual triangle there's our visual triangle just like our original sketch was so next I have to somehow fit a title on here the original placement is actually about here but my photo is bigger so I think I'm actually gonna sit up about here and the one thing I am going to do is use a separate piece of paper. I think we'll use Granny Apple Green. And yeah, I think that'll be perfect. I'm going to cut it to a two inch strip, which may seem a little unusual, but I forgot to bring two things over, so I'm going to make a quick supply run over here to the side for a second. And I'm going to grab a tape topper and I'm going to grab um, some little gems and stuff. I have a whole basket. I knew I was forgetting something when I set up. And of course, I remember it now. <laughs> Okay, so I have a tag topper punch here. So the reason I cut this to two inch is the maximum size you can do this with is two inch. So if you line it up in the indents side to side and you just push that back. If you're somebody that feels the need to look from the bottom, you can see how it's going at the bottom. So, excuse me, I could actually pull that out just a touch if I wanted to and still get the tag topper. Give that a quick punch, set it aside. I'll show you where it's going really cute. Or sorry, really cute, really quick. So I will end up peeling this up just a touch so that I can slide it under because I didn't plan well. But if you've ever seen the take your pick tool, literally we're gonna go like this with the spatula end. It lifted it up just perfectly and slide it under like that. I love that tool. If you don't have one, you do need one. They do make life so much easier, especially since now I'm going to pull that back out and stamp on it. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it there and stamp on it. I'll adhere it. Just bear with me. There's probably somebody going, I can't believe you did that. 
and you just didn't pull it back up. But there, no creases, no nothing. Perfect. So I'm gonna take the lined alphabet stamp set and I wanna spell out, I'm gonna spell dino because I don't think dinosaur is gonna fit very well, let's face it. And D is the one that has the little hook on it. So if you are using this stamp set, you have to think backwards. So, and the reason I say that is I was looking at it one way and I thought that the B was the D. When you go to stamp it down, it's not going to be. So you have to make sure that you are looking the appropriate direction. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna actually use I can find it, the Pretty Peacock ink. I was gonna use black, but if you look, we've got the Pretty Peacock in there all over the place. It'll be dark enough to stamp on the green without any issues. So. There's a D, we'll give that a quick rinse. Of course, I'm trying to put it back upside down. There, we'll grab the eye. And if you are a scrapbooker, I highly recommend this stamp set. One, if you are a purchaser, and you think I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna offset them a little bit, and I'll explain why in a second. But if you are a scrapbooker, and you've been buying letter stickers, these are similar in size to thickers, but they're reusable, so you only buy them once and then you have them for multiple layouts. Is it more work? Absolutely, but you get to customize your color to whatever you want. You can color them in. You can stamp them and you can match them to your paper. It's just so much nicer. So there's the N. And we'll get an O here. It's sticking to me. There we go. And the reason I didn't go perfectly straight and I kind of went up and down is that you won't, it, because now it's on purpose, when you go try to go perfectly straight across, it never works in your favor and one letter always looks slightly off. So that part is done we'll put these back in their case we will put the block back and i'm going to grab i have a pretty peacock marker and i am going to trust my handwriting and i'm going to put park And then I'm going to put the location. So it is Morrisburg. Ontario. And normally I don't put journaling in in front of you guys. So I apologize if I have any spelling errors, but for Bentley's third birthday we made a trip to the dinosaur park in Morrisburg He loved it. Who knew dinosaur statues could 
be so fun. And then this would have been because we actually do his birthday adventures on his birthday. Imagine that. Um, August 25th. And that would have been last year. So that would have been 2018. So journaling is done. And I am horrible for not putting a lot of journaling on. So if you've seen me create layouts before, you already know that. And I think I'm going to use the In Color Faceted Gems because they already come in the pretty peacock color. And we'll just pull that out. And somewhere around here I have my Take Your Pick tool. Now, the putty on this was getting a little old, so I'm just going to tear it off because it's not sticky anymore. But I never thought that I would actually need this thing. But let me tell you, this thing is amazing for picking up jewels. See? Just like that. And I like to go off into the corners a little bit. Like that. We'll get a big one down. The big ones might not pick up with the take your pick tool. Oh yes it will. Might just have to do a bit of sliding is all. I don't want to put it behind him because then it looks kind of like you pooped. <laughs> Sorry. Totally have a little boy that loved that. But can't do it. <laughs> My scrapbooks are for me. <laughs> not for him. Um, and... We'll get some over here. We'll get another big one. Oops. There we go. This one, though, I might actually do three. Oh, this is why you use the take your pick tool. I actually pulled the glue dot right off that. Yeah, it doesn't want to pick it up now. There, and we'll put a little one kind of in front of them. Or over there. So then the reason I did three over there was still keep my odd numbers. So we still have two, five, six, seven. So I think that is it for me. You actually got to see me journal today and use photos, which is a good thing. I don't think you guys can see the whole thing all at once. I apologize. I'll try and get my stand all adjusted so that you can see more next week here. We'll lift that up a bit. We'll see if that helps. Probably still a little off. But thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you are looking for the supplies to make this layout, please take a look in my online store at www.lisahenderson.stampinup.net. Today is the last day of bonus days, meaning that for every $60 you spend in my online store, you get a $6 coupon back to use in August. So don't miss out on that. If you've been waiting to stock up on supplies such as cardstock and adhesive, now's the time. This is approximately about 10% off. I can't say it's exactly 10% off because... If you spend $61, you don't get $6.10 back. You get $6 back in coupons. But it is still um, a well worthwhile deal. So again, my online store is www.lisahenderson.stampinup.net. And thank you so much for joining me. Oh, and thank you, Valerie and Amanda. I appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Okay, bye for now.